Today we're covering four easy weathering techniques to make your model look like they've been through ringer and back again. Whether you're just getting started or looking to add battle scars to your build, this technique will turn your model from fresh out of the box to why does it smell like smoke? Let's dive in. Weathering is my favorite part of this hobby. It's something that uh, I really enjoy doing and it's something that uh, gonna pops out your model and also make your model live a little bit more. And you can tell uh, some kind of a history around uh, the model that you built just with the weathering. And in this video, we will talk about four different techniques. Number one, wash it. First up is the pin wash, a technique that adds depth to your model by focusing on all the tiny details. Imagine your model as a comic book, a uh, drawing that needs some inking to bring out the lines. Here how it's done. Um, start with uh, an enamel wash or make your own by mixing uh, oil paint or enamel paint uh, with some uh, mineral spirits. You want to thin enough to uh, to flow easily but not too watery that it doesn't leave any color behind. Now take your fine brush, load it up with the wash and touch it uh, to the panel lines, rivets and recess area. The wash will flow into this area and darken them, creating the illusion of shadow and depth. And just a quick tip, uh, don't rush. You're not just slapping paint on, you're highlighting all the beautiful details the kit designer work on and your paint job. So if you make a mistake, don't panic. Just grab a cotton swab or a brush, dip in clean thinner and gently clean it up. And voila, your model now has a lot more character. Think of it uh, like your model just got a dramatic uh, makeover. But remember, we're aiming for subtle enhancement, not god phase. Number two, chipping. Next up is chipping, because nothing says battle hardened like a tank with a few scars. This technique will give your model that weathered, I've seen some stuff look. We're going to use two methods, the sponge chipping and brush chipping. Let's start with the sponge technique. Take a small piece of sponge like from a blister pack or even an old kitchen sponge and dip it lightly into your chipping color. You want to use a light color, something that looks like the base metal or the base color and dab off the excess on a paper towel so you don't end up with big blobs of paint. Now gently dab the sponge onto your model, focusing on edges, hatches and the area that will naturally get banged up. The key is randomness. Real chips don't happen in neat row. This technique gives you tiny irregular chips that look natural and if you go overboard just say your tang had a particularly rough day. The next one is the brush chipping method. It's probably the one that I use the most and it's time consuming but when you becoming uh, more and more uh, good with it, you're gonna have a fantastic look. This one's uh, for when you want to control and make larger chips. Take a fine brush, dip it into chipping color and carefully paint in larger chips, especially around handles, hatches and plays where the crew will be a bit rough. You can even use a darker color first to represent the deeper layer of paint, then add a lighter color on top to show where the paint was worn away completely. With this technique, you can go to town. Just remember, it's easy to add more, but harder to take it off. So start late and build it until you're happy with the look. And if uh, anyone asks why your tank is so chipped, 
just tell them it was driven by the world's worst tank driver. Number three, streaks. Now let's add some streaks because what's a battle hardened vehicle without some good old grime and rain marks? This technique simulates the effect of rain washing down dirt and rust from the top to the vehicle to the side and it's super easy to do. Start by mixing a bit of oil paint or enamel paint with thinner so it's nice and fluid. You want as consistency that allow the paint to flow but not too runny. You can also use some, uh, I would say, a ready done uh, product on the market like uh, the Valeo um, weathering product or AK Interactive or Ammo MIG. Um, and it's super easy. You just want basically load up a fine brush and apply small dots uh, of paint along the top of the panels or where the streaks will naturally form like under bolts, rivets, or rust spots. Now comes the fun part. With a clean, soft brush, slightly damp in thinner, drag the paint to uh, downwards in the direction of gravity. This creates an effect of rain streaks. The key here is subtly start light and add more streaks if needed. You can even fix different colors to add some more variation and realism. Also, you can use the oil dot technique. So basically, you're just applying some dot all over your vehicle with, I would say, four or five different colors. And you just basically do your streaks uh, with, um, with a brush with a little bit of thinner. And there you go. Your vehicle now looks like it's been through a few rainstorm or maybe just park under a leaky gutter. Either way, it adds a ton of realism just don't forget to blend those streaks out. We're going uh, for uh, realistic weathering, not someone forgot their umbrella. Number four, dust and mud. Finally, it's time to get down and dirty with some dust and mud effect. This is where you can let loose and give your model that I've been through a swamp look. We're going to use pigments powders and maybe even some real dirt if you're feeling adventurous. Start by choosing your pigments. These are basically powdered color that mimic dust, dirt, and mud. I did a full video on the top right corner. You will see the link on how to do your own pigments. Load up a brush with the pigment and apply it to dry uh, to the area that will naturally collect dust like uh, the tracks, the lower hull, and the wheels wells. You can also use a wet brush to apply the pigment with some thinner or fixer to get a more permanent uh, muddy look. Don't be afraid to get creative here. Build up layers of different colors to create depth and texture. You can even mix in some real dirt or sand if, uh, if you want to add some more realism. If you were feeling brave, splash a bit of mud around with a brush and some wet pigment to stimulate fresh mud splatter. And there you have it. Your model now looks like it's been through some serious terrain. Uh, whether it's just dusty desert road or a muddy battlefield, um, these effects will make your vehicle look like uh, it's been uh, in seen some action. Just remember to go easy unless you want your tank to look like uh, it's been mud wrestling. And that's it guys. Four easy weathering technique to transform your model from factory fresh to battle worn veteran. Try these out on your next build and remember weathering is all about telling a story with your model. If you like this video, hit that like button and if you didn't, well, maybe your tank is still too clean. See you in the next time.